Kenny Wallace. It all started with Russ Wallace and grew into the first family of racing. Rusty, Mike, and Kenny, all top NASCAR drivers. Tonight, we honor Kenny Wallace, the energetic disciple of motorsports. Kenny goes through life like his hair is on fire. Pictures, or in this case, video, speaks louder than I can. So turn your attention to the video screens and enjoy the life of Kenny Wallace. The Kenny Wallace story starts in the Midwest in the 1960s and 70s. Kenny's father, Russ Wallace, tore up the local dirt tracks and asphalt bull rings, teaching his sons, Rusty, Mike, and Kenny, about hard work, determination, and never giving up, which carved a path for their racing success. Oldest son, Rusty, was the first to get behind the wheel with youngest son, Kenny, working as a mechanic. But it wasn't long before Kenny became a driver himself. He won the first race he ever entered in 1982, then raced in the very competitive ASA series, winning Rookie of the Year honors in 1986. Kenny's first taste of NASCAR came driving for a legend. He got the opportunity to drive Dale Earnhardt's number eight Xfinity series car, where he finished 11th and made his case for the big time. Soon after, brother Rusty invited Kenny to move south. Kenny Wallace went on to have a very successful Xfinity Series career, compiling nine wins, numerous poles, and top five finishes. Plus, he finished in the top ten of the championship standings in ten different seasons. Checkered flag for Kenny Wallace. In addition to the on-track accolades, Kenny was voted most popular driver of the Xfinity Series three times by the fans, the most all-time. Along with his excellent Xfinity Series resume, Kenny has over 340 starts in NASCAR's Cup Series with pole positions, top five finishes, and several dramatic second place finishes, including finishing runner-up to brother Rusty in the 1998 Bud Shootout. The brothers work together and it's gonna get a win. And he pushed good friend Dale Earnhardt to his final Cup Series win at the Talladega Super Speedway. Senior has come from 17th spot in four laps to lead it. Earnhardt pulls up and says, thank you, Kenny Wallace. Kenny was a NASCAR driver for over 25 years, and his longevity netted the most starts in the history of the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And he started 905 races total in NASCAR's elite divisions, something only a handful of drivers have accomplished. Once Kenny hung up his helmet, he dove headfirst into television. He became one of the most popular television personalities, working for networks like Speed and Fox Sports. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to win the race today! Matt the Brat Kenseth! Kenny's fun-loving attitude and tell-it-like-it-is style make him a fan favorite to viewers all over the country. But after his NASCAR driving duties ended, Kenny didn't hang up his helmet for long. He went back to his roots and started racing a dirt modified throughout the United States, including back home in the Midwest. Kenny found success early and often filling his trophy case with plenty of dirt hardware. Racing has been a part of Kenny Wallace's life for over 40 years. His demanding schedule pulls him in multiple directions at all times, but he always sports a great attitude and makes time for the fans whenever he can. Kenny's first love was racing, and through perseverance and determination, he turned his love into a lifelong passion that provided for his family, and that passion is still going strong today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're honored to welcome Kenny Wallace into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Sit down, Kenny. I can't help myself. <laughs> I noticed. You told me earlier when you see yourself in those cars, it's almost like an out-of-body experience. Like, oh my God, we're three a wide doing 200 miles an hour. You know, uh, my wife Kim is right there, and my mom, Judy. Uh, I told you earlier what would happen about 15, 18 years ago. The races would be on ESPN, and we'd be at Talladega running 210 mile an hour, and we'd get on the airplane, we'd land back in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we'd be, you know, ESPN, they would replay the races at like 1, 2 in the morning. And, man, I'm still buzzing. And I'd watch the races. And Kim would lay in bed with me, and we'd way, lay awake. And I said, my God, I can't believe that's me. I'm four wide. And she goes, you did that all day long. That's why I don't have any fingernails left. <laughs> so 
Yeah, I'm sure all the great athletes are, are like that. You, you, you watch it. Somebody makes you watch a replay, and you're like, that's me? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. I asked you one time what it feels like to drive 200 miles an hour with a guy three feet in front of you or two feet in front of you and once some guy right on you. And you said, eh, it's like doing 70 miles an hour on Highway 6440. I said, come on, Kenny. But you actually meant that, right? It becomes relative. Uh, I'll never forget, you know, coming out of Arnold, Missouri, uh, raised in Rolla. Uh, you know, my very first time I went to Daytona International Motor Speedway. I mean, the greatest racetrack in the world. And I got on the racetrack, and I had never been to a racetrack where you hold the gas pedal wide open, never left. <laughs> I'm not, All the time. Huh? My dad raced at Lake Hill in Valley Park, Missouri. Right. And any time a corner came up, you let off. So here I am at Daytona. I went around the track a couple laps. I come in, and my crew said, what's wrong, Herman? It's my nickname. And I said, hold on, just let me get, let me get my stuff together. It's very hard to hold a car wide open. And I'll never forget that day. Once... Held the car wide open, and then uh, no different than all these great athletes, you have to have a play. And our play in auto racing, you know, and our strategy is the car has to be there for you. I once talked to the great Dale Sr. He was a good friend of mine. I said, man, you are fast. And Dale Sr. said, I had a really good horse to ride. So the key to our success is to have a good horse. And, uh, yeah. I know NASCAR has changed just like other sports, and it's become a sport of money in the sense that if you don't have a lot of money, you can't be competitive. You know, the one-car teams no longer can compete, right? What does it cost to put a car in the, big, in the NASCAR races? Too much, that's for sure. Uh, to, run a, to, to be like Jimmy Johnson, our seven-time champion in NASCAR, it's $20 million, and then he's going to knock down another $20 million. So it's big time sports nowadays. I think we all know that. But uh, yeah, twenty yeah. million. Twenty million. Yeah. What's an engine cost for heaven's sakes? A good motor to run the Daytona 500 and win the Daytona 500. That motor, with all the development, the engineering for one motor, uh, it's two hundred thousand, uh, and and that's the engineering work. And then you have to rebuild that race, t uh, that motor to run the next race. Where'd the name Herman come from? <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> my, my, with you, it would yeah, be, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a crazy story is what I mean. Uh, you know, born and raised right here in St. Louis, my dad would take me down to a, a guy named Bob Miller's car lot. I don't know where Bob's car lot was, Mom, maybe off of uh, Gravoy. But I would go down there, and Bob was a big German man, you know, six, you know, I mean, almost so seven foot. And he looked at me one day, and he said, oh, Herman the German. And I said, you know, I was a little kid. I didn't know what the hell that meant. <laughs> Basically, you know, and this is the truth. And uh, I don't want you all feeling sorry for me, but I was diagnosed hyperactive, ADD. Well, that's a shock. And, and Tourette's. So I'm all messed up. And, uh, and old, old Bob, he just nicknamed me Herman the German. And then I made it down to NASCAR and the great deal senior looked at me, put me in the headlock. He says, you're the damn Hermanator. So... <laughs> It's really Herman, and that was Bob Miller. He owned an Amico gas station down off Hampton by River de Pere, and uh, yeah. And so that's how the Hermanator or Herman came from. Yep. Uh, you, you told me that you, and you saw in the video, you did a lot of television. You told me sitting at the table a little bit ago, you told the people at Fox, I guess, yep. I'm finished. Yep. So what I was, t you know, we've known each other for a long time, yeah. and uh, I was telling Tom Ackerman this, you know, I've been on the road my whole life. I'm 55 years old now. My wife tells me every day that's really young. I'm like, darn, okay. So, uh, <laughs> man, I'll tell you what, it's like Groundhog Day at times. You know, every single Thursday to Lambert Airport and fight those people getting on the Madame airplanes and rental car buses. And, you know, it was better when I owned my own airplane for two years. That was never, never land. And, and then I, I quit racing. And you didn't fly the damn thing, did you? No, hell no. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm sure everybody will tell you, watching all these great athletes be on the road your whole life, yeah. uh, nobody wants me to quit doing TV, but I'm done. Uh, my boss is Eric Shanks, the president of Fox Sports, Jacob Ullman that hires all the talent. You know, this is, this is Joe Buck's boss. Uh, they're all saying, you're just tired. I'm like, no, man. Uh, you're right, I am tired. So I said, if you can pick me up in a helicopter at my house in Arnold, Missouri, and drop me off at Sears Point in San Francisco, I'm all in. <laughs> but uh, I'm done. Uh, 
doing that. They're they're talking to me maybe about some podcasts, but uh, we got grandbabies now, and man, I love them grandbabies. Got my three daughters here, Brooke, Brandy, Brittany. Brooks on me to spend some time with the kids, so I'll just keep running that dirt car. Well, after after over two decades in North Carolina, the good news is you moved back, right? You moved back home. two years ago because these are my homies. This is St. Louis. I love Bush Stadium, love the Blues. Uh, listen, I am everything St. Louis. I live, eat, and breathe uh, the St. Louis Cardinals, the Blues. Actually, Kerber just sent me. Chris Kerber he, he texted me. Say congratulations, man. So I, like I say, uh, I miss our cardiac cardinals and Eric Coriel and Hannafin and you know I'm just everything St. Louis. Now where can we see you drive? You love the dirt. Where can we see yeah. you drive on the dirt dirt tracks? Man, we're starting a model right across the river. The whole United States. Everybody in the United States is coming right here. Everybody Gr- in the United Granite, States is coming. You here? got it. Granite City, Illinois, <laughs> Tri-City Speedway. Right, sure. It's called Modified Mania. You will have uh, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. You'll have about you know, 15,000 people over there. Are, so, you dri- are you riding? Are you driving? Look at me, man. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Wallace. My dear friend.